We need a team. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, very important detail is if I keep my grip on his wrist too strong, he won't be able to turn his arm properly. So when he extends, even though I want to go, I'm kind of keeping his thumb pinned and then I'll start trying to basically key lock him with an extended arm, which isn't going to work very well. So release your grip or not release, but just open it up because I want his hand to be able to rotate because I want to catch him pretty much right after the thumb gets to that 90 degree point. I want to catch him about here. Okay, so that way the elbow is locked in line with the shoulder. Now to finish this, this one can be tough for people who haven't done it before. It takes a little bit of sensitivity. But what I want to be doing is shifting my body weight forward because if I stay where I'm at, unless I have orangutan arms, um, it's going to be really tough to get the proper range. So as he extends, I'm going to see slide my body forward on top of his uh, arm a little bit more. Now the, the first, the key lock was here. Now you could tap him like that. But it's a little bit easier because remember he, he's rotating his thumb the opposite way. So I want to be able to pull his thumb or his hand into the joint. So come back. So just from here, again, to catch him, I'm going to lift this elbow up and then I use my wrist as my hip instead for the arm bar. And then my hand's still pulling down. And this was a pretty quick tap. You should be able to feel the elbow kind of touching your uh, forearm. So let's do that again. So caught the key lock, he tapped, he starts extending. I just kind of let his hand slide, but then I catch him here. I could, again, do this for sure, but it's a little bit awkward. I want to go here and then push down from this position. Lastly, he's going to circle his arm completely out, and I let go of his arm, and we're going to go for our cross side arm bar. So from here, my hand comes back to block his head. I scoop his arm as I reset myself back over my hips, or back over my heels. So in this position here, you saw I picked up his shoulder. I don't want to be trying to go for the arm lock from here. Hand back, I shift my weight back in and I'm going to really aggressively tuck my elbow. Think about trying to like crush or break the guy's uh, floating rib. And my head is keeping this really tight here. Now from this spot, you could push his head down, but it shouldn't be necessary. Don't worry about turning first. My foot's going to step right in line with his arm. Reach for the pant and then now all I have to do is pivot my knee goes into his rib cage. My other knee just comes off the mat. Pinch your knees tight and pull him in. This grip is really handy for that to make sure you pull the guy in range. And then now from here, don't worry about fighting for the wrist. All I have to do is make an arrowhead in front of me. If you want to grab your la lapel, that's fine. But I pinch here at the elbow up so that as I slide back, you notice that his thumb is properly aligned for the lock. If I pinch my forearm tight against my body, like so flat instead of having that arrow, what happens is that his thumb ends up off to the side. You'll still probably tap him, but if I keep my elbow up, sorry, does I'll end up catching him nice there. Okay, let's take another arm. One more time. So first two are really easy, guys, especially the first one. So side control, grab the wrist, or wrist, shoulder, guys, sorry, Friday brain again. Drop your hip here and then I just curl my shoulder forward to create that, put some tension on, right, to create the space. You don't need much, just to get your hand through. Don't push the arm down, switch your base to bring the arm to the mat. Nice strong grips on top, remember no thumbs. Slide and lift for the tap. He extends, don't fight him, let him turn and catch. And then now my opposite elbow raises and I drive here, wrists buckling, arm bending or straightening and from there he turns out after that last tap hand to the head so he doesn't scoot away from me as I do this catch his tricep and tuck but I don't want to be here I want to bury his arm step in line with the armpit grab for the knee and then just pivot pull it drag your heel in as you do this knees tight arrowhead and just sit back with the lock. And then if you get to this point where you just kind of, he's just surviving, then you can gather it up and go from there. Don't worry about throwing your leg over guys. Not necessary, okay? If it's a prolonged battle, sometimes, yeah, you'll have to do that, but you want to avoid that if you, if you can, okay? So we'll start with that. I'll give you a couple more details just on, on making the attacks a bit better, okay? <coughs> Now, um, the big thing with submissions is like the, the subtle things that you do. It's not, it's not the big motions that, that make the big difference. 
Um, it, it's the, the little things. So first one here, actually, let me use someone who actually has a shoulder. Uh, Terry? Um, so the, uh, the best detail I have for the, the key lock or the Americana, so key lock, Americans call it that, Brazilians call it the Americana, same, same technique, okay? Um, so the, the big detail here is that we can really increase a lot of pressure um, utilizing our wrists. So when we get our grip here, instead of everything just being arms, like so, what we're gonna do is curl both wrists. You kind of do this already when you really start cranking on it because you just try and add more strength, but both wrists are going to elevate in this position. Now it's not just going to end up doing a little bit of this, it's also rotating the person's wrist here and so it makes it a very, very awkward position. It just I'm not sure what exactly it's doing to the shoulder and, and elbow joints, um, but it's, it's tying things up in a way that makes the, the tap a lot faster. So um, everything's the same here. Grab the shoulder, drop the hip, curl the shoulder forward to catch the wrist, turn back as one, and from here. So if we just get Terry just to tap, you know, as late as he can without, you know, hurting himself. So standard key lock. If I slide and lift, nothing to do with the wrist here. Let's see how long it takes him to tap. Okay, you also notice that I have to like really pull. Okay, now if I curl my wrist, so again, this one curls and this one curls. It also really tightens up the position. You notice his hand gets a lot closer to his body, right? And then now from here, let's see how long it takes. Okay, not very long. Some guys, if they have a tight shoulder, you'll just do this and they'll tap. Okay, now I mentioned this as I was going around. Um, two ways of looking at it, either his hand's a paintbrush and you're trying to draw a line to his hip. So if I don't have his hand on the floor, there's no line, okay? And thinking about it this way, if you bring your arm in front of you like this and then turn it, you have pretty good range. But as it comes back this way, that's where you start to feel the pain. Right, so I don't want his elbow to be directly in front of him, right? So hand stays planted. Other way of looking at it is just to add insult to injury and give him a rug burn on the back of his wrist at the same time as you snapping his shoulder, okay? So curl your wrist, but make sure that his hand stays planted and I stay tight to this position as much as I can for the tap, okay? A lot of people don't like the key lock once they get to a certain level because it's too easy to escape because we've been attacked by it since day one. Um, but if the guy on top really knows how to apply this technique, it, it can be, you can tap anybody out with it, okay? So that's the first detail. The, the straight arm lock here, when he extends, again, I don't stay where I'm at again because if I were to stay where, I'm, where I am and I still, first of all, it'll be very awkward to actually keep control, but you see how low on the lever I am. Right? I'm not gonna have much strength in this position and also I'm grabbing onto the fatty part of his arm so it's gonna be tough to maintain. Like for him to actually spin his hand out here, like you know, go, rotate your arm. Like I, I can't keep a grip because it's too wide, right? I gotta control his wrist so I'm stronger and also so I can maintain my grip. So I have to slide forward and catch it. Now what happens though is that you see that my angle of the bar changes a little bit though. So it's not gonna be quite as good, which is why the location of your wrist is important. I need to, if I can kind of see here with the, uh, tighten up your key. See, see the little gap here, right behind the elbow here? If you actually stick your finger right behind it, it's like a pressure point as well. It's a very uncomfortable spot. So that's what you're aiming for with the wrist. Ideally, when I catch him, I would be able to tap him out with both elbows on the floor. So it's just pressure down and then elevating your wrist up. So think, you know, pulling the hands to the chest for an arm bar and then your hips elevating to get the tap. So I'm trying to just do that. But when you add the extra strength of lifting the elbow up and just kind of buckling into it, you just get that much more power. But you don't want to overdo it. I saw some of you like way up here and it's like you're trying to struggle for it. You still want to kind of stay tight to the elbow. So I'm just pushing down, my wrist starts, and then just to get a little bit more range out of the wrist, I just start to open this elbow up. You can do it this way as well, but usually what ends up happening is you end up, he pulls his hand back in, and then you end up fighting for the key lock again in an awkward position. So it's, I like to catch guys on the way out, not, not on the way in, if that makes sense. Now, the, the arm bar, he spins his arm out, sorry, the uh, cross side arm bar, from here, first thing, put my hand here because after that second attack, I have to shift my body weight back. But if I let go of him here, he's gonna start hip escaping and start pulling free. And I can still catch him, but I create a little bit too much space. 
So when I bring my hand in tight here, I kind of block him from getting away from me. So he's still contained between two parts of my body or to both sides are trapped. So I sit back catching his tricep and I'm gonna tuck my elbow in and I really wanna exaggerate this here. I almost think um, it, sometimes, like I caught him really deep there, but like usually you'll kind of have the hand floating because he re recognizes the danger and he starts trying to pull his arm free. Think like you're trying to like choke uh, his arm with your neck and your bicep. Okay, I think like it's an arm triangle, but uh, on his arm, which obviously you're not gonna choke him out, guys. Okay? So from here, I stay really, really tight. Keep your head down. And once I go to here, if the guy starts sitting up with you, this hand just switches to pushing his head out of the way. Go for the pan grip, very important guys, because when I pivot and bite here, or pivot and bite, pivot and turn, my knee stays tight. Most people make the mistake, when they turn, they put their knee on the mat. It's not about putting the knee pressure over the knee. It's about the rotation. So this the shin basically stays in place, which is why you don't want to shortchange your step. Exaggerate the step on the back. And then now just think getting up on your toes and then I can peer wet nicely. Catch the pant, elbow tight, and then drag him in with the heel here and here. Now I mentioned this earlier. Let me just turn a bit so you guys can see that. So from here, a lot of people like to uh, kick the leg over. Now, for the arm bar, remember, staying tight in the position is always key, and this knee pressure is what's most important. So just make sure you're pinching here, and it's really tough for the person to free their arm. The only downside to this style of an arm bar, by having your foot tucked in, is the hitchhiker escape. is a lot more free. It's easier for him to turn because you don't have a leg over his body. That's why we want to maintain this grip on the pin. That's what's going to remove that chance, okay? Personally, I like it when guys try and stick their leg over because I'm ready to catch the foot exactly and stuff it. Right, let's catch it exactly. Because that plays into the way I personally like to see my arm walks. So don't do it. Keep the knee pinched in, keep this. I'd rather have an extra 30 seconds of fight just kind of doing this sort of stuff and adjusting to try and get the guy to tap than to let go and have the guy suddenly roll out on me. Okay? So. Key lock, roll your wrist, stay tight, heavy on it, just curl up over top of the arm, everything really strong. The straight arm bar, remember we wanna try and find that little pressure point right behind the elbow there, especially when the arm extends, you get a little bit of a catch there, there's a hook. Make sure you're right over that, and again, try and stay low on the position, elevate the elbow only as necessary, okay? And then on the last one there, overdo the step, go deep on the back, so it's easier to, to maintain your position and that you don't make the mistake of the guy getting over top of your leg and maintain the grip on the pan. Okay? Let's go for like two more minutes, guys. Try and implement those. You can do them individually as a task. 